Welcome back to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, and fishing needs, go to eastport.info. Now let's get this show started. <laughs> What's going on, Facebook, YouTube, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? I know we're at a different time than usual uh, tonight. Getting on here a little early compared to uh, normal Thursdays. Normally we're on at 7 uh, but tonight, uh, immediately following our show, uh, Dustin Nichols is doing a little tournament recap with some guys from the uh, Saltwater Tournament this past weekend. So be sure to tune in to that at 7 Central, 8 Eastern. Uh, but we got a cool show tonight with the Creek Crawler himself, Mr. Brian Slayton in the house. Uh, good dude, man. Got to meet him down at Tennessee a couple weeks ago. Uh, fished his first ever kayak fishing tournament, ended up taking home a fifth place finish. I think it was cash to check all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, man, drop in the comments where you guys are tuning in from and, uh, looking forward to, uh, chatting with Brian tonight. If you guys got any, uh, questions as we're going along, feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll get them answered for you folks. Uh, we got Matt Lintzman in the house. What's up, brother? Hope you're doing well. Chris Slifka, the Slifka's in the house, tuning in on the old YouTubes. So uh, let's get the man of the hour in the house, uh, Mr. Brian Slayton. What's up, brother? How's it going, man? You know, just uh, living the dream. Just, uh, you know, snuck down to the little river here and uh, caught a couple smallies before I jumped on a podcast. So Did some bank beating. Yeah, life is good, bro. Life is good. <laughs> It's always so, a good time. Heck yeah, man. I know you're no stranger to uh, fishing the small creeks and rivers and stuff like that. So we'll get into that. But, uh, you know, first off, man, let's get a background on you, man. Who you are, how you got into fishing, and then we'll kind of segue into uh, why you started YouTube. Because you got a pretty big, popular YouTube channel, which is cool. And uh, definitely want to touch on that. And you're new to the kayak fishing itself. So... Definitely want to hear about the trials and tribulations on that one, brother. So, <laughs> definitely. Uh, my name is Brian Slayton. I'm a bank wade fishing, kayak fishing angler in the state of Ohio, focused mainly on southern Ohio. Been doing it for a very long time. Uh, probably in my younger teen years, I started doing it by myself when my mom was comfortable with me walking for miles and rivers and creeks. <laughs> on my lonesome but uh started out in the creeks and rivers and pretty much haven't left the bank since but i did start getting a kayak this this past year or so really starting to dabble in the kayak fishing and it, it feels really nice touching places that you really can't touch from the bank yeah for sure <laughs> or, or having to wade three miles to get to or, right? <laughs> hey it builds up the leg muscles all right I can yeah <laughs> So now when, I, I'm, when I'm out portage in a kayak, it's a little bit easier on me. Sure. I mean, you could probably uh, bench 50 pounds, but leg press, <laughs> leg press 400. I get it. Yeah, I understand, it's like dude. 600 or something at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Got some miles on those legs, bro. Oh, man. it's I enjoy it. I think it's a cool way to get intimate with uh, the outdoors is getting in the water and really coming up being up close and personal with the fish that you're chasing, you can learn a lot from these fish when you're, when you're fishing clear water systems, fishing shallow water, you can really learn how these fish react and just the way their lifestyles are in the Creek. And you can really apply that to other, other water bodies around. Sure. It's really cool. I love it. No, I dig that, man. I mean, you know, as fishermen, we should always be trying to learn one new thing every trip out, you know, and, like you're talking about dude fish uh fish is you know natural uh you know habitat what they're doing uh i'm missing the word ecosystems 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you know, just behaviors. behaviors. That's it. You know, it's it's been a rough day, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, to to learn the nature of what those fish are doing in a creek or a river system, I mean, that could be applied to where you can't see them in a in a dirty body of water or something mm-hmm. like that, you know. Yeah. Or or when the water's high and running, you know, dirty. Obviously, you got some areas that you know where they're they're probably, uh, you know, hanging out for sure. Yeah, and just understanding the aquatic ecosystem on another level. What's up, Reagan? Just understanding the aquatic ecosystem on another level and being able to know what fish like to be around. And when you're fishing clear water, shallow water systems, you can apply that knowledge to those bigger bodies of water, big lakes, big rivers. When you when you take that microscopic view from a creek and really apply it to a larger system, you can be you can start to become really effective in other places and other bodies of water. No, I feel that, dude. I've I've spent a lot of time on creeks and rivers, mainly fly fishing for trout. And it done the same things you're talking about, dude. Like yeah. All right, I know like typically a, a trout's gonna hang here on this seam, things like that. Yeah. And uh I've applied that to, you know, because in in southwest Wisconsin, we got these little chalk streams loaded with trout, which are fun, but I've applied taken my knowledge from that and applied it out west on like the Colorado River, the Blue yeah. River, things like that, like world renowned, huge mm-hmm. clear water fisheries, you know, which is pretty cool. Yeah, because the thing is, what what you're pursuing, the species you're pursuing, they're going to relate to the same stuff no matter where they're at. And yeah. once you can start to figure out that pattern of what different species like, what they don't like, you know, you can really, really have a lot of success anywhere you go on the planet, really. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I mean, that's how I figured out how to catch smallmouth on the river, you know. is uh, Yeah, it's, just a, it's the same. It's fishing the same for trout. Techniques. Yeah, just fishing for trout. It's just that... Smallmouth are like bronze trout, basically. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, pretty much so. I mean, that, that that's what I'm going to call them from now on. Bronze trout. I like bronze that. Trout. I like that. That's a good name. Uh, uh, Matt Lintzman is asking, have I fished the Brule up north? Not the Brule. Uh, I've fished the Blue River in uh, Colorado. It goes through uh, Silverthorn there. And it's a blue ribbon uh, rainbow stream and natural. And what it is, is they got freshwater shrimp coming out of the Dillon Reservoir Ooh. flowing into that river. And they just chomp on a man. And oh, man. One of my biggest brown trout I've ever caught in the river came from there and, uh, and rainbow trout, actually. That rainbow I caught was probably six seven pounds i mean it was huge huge dude we got freshwater shrimp in ohio believe it or not it's funny man like i was just reading something uh somebody was posting that they figured out there was freshwater shrimp in uh in a river or something close to here and they were catching fish on a shrimp pattern uh walleyes i think it was or something you know what's funny is um nico bates makes a little shrimp Okay. And I was throwing it in the river down here by my house and I end up catching, I think nine species on a, nice. on a soft plastic shrimp. That's cool. Because right downstream we have the Ohio river, the Hawking river is where I live and it flows into the Ohio river. And right at the mouth of the Ohio river, there's these things called a grass shrimp and they okay. come up into the river and uh, they're about like an inch long, little clear shrimp, but it's really mm-hmm. cool. And not a lot of people realize that we have, freshwater shrimp and you got to thank those fish well they're probably chomping are, it, dude. yeah they're chomping and when they're growing up you know when those fish are getting bigger they know they know what a shrimp looks like they remember that sure 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 yeah i mean it's like uh lobster to us you know shrimp shrimp yeah. is the lobster for the the fish <laughs> you know what i mean like that special treat you only get once in a while because it's so damn expensive i mean yeah, Same thing you gotta, for the you fish. Gotta, when you got the chance to do it, you got to eat it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I love it, dude. I love it. You don't pass up the surfing turf. <laughs> yeah, and if you do, you get slapped. Like, what yeah, is wrong dude, with you, bro? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. So, I mean, you got a big YouTube channel. It's called the Creek Crawler, obviously. And uh, like, how did that all start, man? 
Yeah, so um, I was in the Navy from 2012 to 2016, and I got home and moved to Southeast Ohio. I'm originally from Southwest Ohio, lived, born and raised on the Great Miami River. Um, once I completed my service for the Navy, I came to Southeast Ohio to go to school at Hawking College. Um, some of you guys that are listening may know who John B. is. Yep. He went to Hawking College, and I came here this semester that he left. Okay. And, um, you know, he was doing his thing, and I was like, man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so I picked up my camera. I was like, I, I'm i watching these people catch fish. I'm like, man, I can do this. So I started a YouTube channel, I think, around the end of 2018, I want to say. Some of those beginning videos are just, like, cringy. But, you, you know, you learn you learn how to make a nice video. You know, you, you figure out how to make stuff flow and something enjoyable. And I've been doing it for a few years now and it's, it's grown to a pretty cool, pretty cool place. And it's given me a lot of opportunities in the fishing industry. No, it's super cool, man. And, uh, I've been watching some of your stuff. Obviously I saw the, uh, the video from when you, uh, fish the tournament down there with us in Tennessee yes. and, um, no, it's good stuff, man. And I think too, like, I love that you bring a, a real aspect to it and it's uh educational at the same time man. you try to yes i love i love teaching people how to catch fish i love showing people how to catch fish um that's what we have to do as anglers i think it's our duty to provide a service for people to really really develop a care for the waterways and our resources and i think that's the best way to do it is when you get somebody on a fish you can really change somebody's life it really it really can happen absolutely man 100 percent. especially the young ones man like you oh, know yeah. i talk about it all the time on here and they're too busy doing this thing now looking at the yeah. phone <laughs> and uh and it's great man because I, I know a couple guys right now that have like young young boys and uh they've approached me and they're like hey my kid is watching youtube fishing videos non-stop like what should I get them? What should I do? <laughs> Where could I go? And like, you know, I'll spill the beans. Get him one of these right here. And then you take him to the river and start making videos with him. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But it, it, it's cool to see that, you know what I mean? But I think, too, like you said, like, you know, showing them the right, the right ways in um, taking care of the rivers or waterways, you know, whether, you know, they're lake fishermen, creek fishermen, you know, big river, great lakes, saltwater, whatever it may be, you know, like relaying to them that you need to, you know, take care of the, the ecosystem, so to speak. So that way mm -hmm. their kids and their kids, yeah. kids can, you know, catch, catch fish for generations to come, man. Yeah. Just being, being, teaching everybody to be good stewards of the landscape and just really bringing a light to conservation and showing people why we love this resource and really just trying to grow that grow that team as much as possible because at the end of the day when we're going for laws and policies and regulations and stuff that affect our waterways i think we need the biggest team possible absolutely absolutely 100 percent, 100 percent. um what's been your uh, biggest struggle you think with uh you know youtube so to speak biggest struggle uh, is just trying to relay that message of sharing knowledge but not being too specific um i am so guilty of doing it right doing from the beginning like i didn't realize how many people were going to be hurt from videos that i made and i and it was it was not meant to be it was not any malice involved i was just making videos i enjoyed it thoroughly and uploading videos and for some reason some people were being very getting very upset with me and i kind of learned how to just forget that and just do what i love to do and just sharing my passion no matter what because if i have 90 people that love what i do and i have two people that really don't care i don't it doesn't bother me anymore and i used to get uh, i used to be affected by that and if you if you're showing people the world your passion um there's going to be people that want to follow you and those other people really don't matter. So sure. just trying to just trying to maintain that balance of not really being affected of what the people that don't matter that their voices, you know. I'm gonna guess because I've I've heard a lot about these Ohio folks get 
bent out of shape when you go film in a fishing spot, right? Yeah. 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 Or take a you photo know. or something like that. Dude, in obviously we got some guys on paddle and fin that are from Ohio and like that's the biggest yeah. thing. Like I know we did a, a a live stream tournament right at the beginning of COVID. And uh one of our guys was like, Well, my spot to fish is like the GMR, right? Yeah. And he's like, I'm gonna get so much heat for this. And I'm like, You really care what other people think about like yeah. that, you know? And he's like, No, you're right, you know. And it's it's the same thing, man. Like I've I've gotten heat over that for the over the years for posting videos and stuff of where I'm fishing or what I'm catching them on or yeah, because I'm doing this rig or whatever that may not be well known. Like some, some of the trolls need to get over them. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> it's, it's, un it's an unfortunate thing. Um, I don't, I don't get the possessive aspect of public lands. Right. The public lands are meant to be shared with everyone. Sure. Um, and people, there are some people, out there that just think it's their landscape and it's that's if you want to if you want a community to, to grow and thrive and an industry to grow and thrive i don't i the possessive aspect of of our rivers and creeks and streams and lakes it just it doesn't make sense to me well and it's funny too because you talk about like conservation and things like that and a lot of times those knuckleheads are the ones leaving their trash on the bank yeah and like stuff like that dude and it's like dude you're gonna give me a hard time for putting up a video from fishing in this spot, but like you're leaving a bunch of trash over here, dude. Like yeah. what the hell is wrong with you, bro? And then, and then, you know, who gets the blame for that? I get the blame for that. People will be like, Hey man, all these people down here, watch your video. They're trashing the place. I'm like, yeah, right. I, it's like, do you want to blame me for the deer population too? While you're, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, like my I mean, buddy didn't shoot a turkey, a creek crawler recorded a video on smallmouth in the river. <laughs> do you think do you think like knowing that when you first started out that kind of held you back from like your creative ways with your YouTube channel and like yeah, the way you filmed and like where you filmed and what you filmed? Well, to be honest, I want to create a content to where it's conscious. Um I understand people will be like, oh, you're in my spot. I don't, that doesn't bother me no more. Sure. I want to, obviously I'm going to have spots that I want to, I want, you know, I don't want a lot of people in, you know, if that makes sense. And there's a way you can make a video to where the only people that are going to know where you're at are the people that already fish it hardcore sure. anyway. You sure. have to have that, you have to have that survey or knowledge to really watch one of my videos and be like, oh, he's here. And even, even at that point, like, are you going to be fishing like me? Like not right. everybody's going to come with that same pressure. If that sure. makes sense. Sure. But yeah, it definitely, it definitely impacts your creative, your creative um, mode when you're trying to make a video and stuff. And people are just sending, I got nasty messages, Brian. It was unreal. The stuff I was getting on um, Instagram and stuff. And I just couldn't believe it. And I was just, it really just left a bad taste in my mouth, but you know what it's over with now. And I'm moving forward and I'm just going to make videos how I want to make videos. And, that's how it's going to be good for you man good for you no i mean i you know i could kind of relate when i started the podcast and stuff i was always weary of what i'd say or mm -hmm. what i would do or some of the topics and people and things we would uh talk to or talk about you know because i was worried what the the rest of the you know my peers would think or say and you know at this yeah. point i just don't really care <laughs> hey, you know you what can't i mean make everyone happy right this is something i've come up with you can't make everyone happy but you can be happy for everyone so when someone's doing something that they love to do why can't you just be like happy for them you know this world is just so crazy and <laughs> this dude says stop fishing my spot <laughs> i've probably been there done that it's but uh that's uh matt sowers in the chat what's up oh brother? it's matt yeah <laughs> <Stop. Yeah. laughs> oh gosh but yeah dude just in a world that's just so crazy right now and you see someone smiling with a with a bass on facebook and you see people in the comments just blowing them up like hey you're gonna watch my i'm just like man come on now 
Yeah, right. Let's, let's right. be better than that. Let's let's. I missed let's, the uh, sign let's, with let's your name on it when I pulled into the parking lot, bro. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Last time I checked, I bought a fishing license, and I'm allowed to be wherever I want in public. It, that's just it, too, right? Like, I mean, let let's be real, right? There's uh there's a common etiquette, you know. Like, obviously, you're not walking up and fishing shirt as shoulder with a dude. Yeah. You're showing up fishing an empty spot, like. Because I've had guys do that where I'm on the water in a kayak or a boat and they pull right up next to me, dude. I'm like, hey, bro, you might as well just yeah. tie off, you know? Yeah. Let's, let's hey, fish anchor together. up, bro. <laughs> well, you're fishing bro, my bro. spot. You're fishing my spot. Like, dude. Oh, like, my God. See, and that's break. the thing. We have to turn this We have to turn this bad this bad image around and turn it into an educational one. We can sure. really, we can, we can move that energy into be into being something productive and, and just educating people on the fact of just the basic fishing etiquette. Well, and that's just it too, right? Like normally, I, like I, I don't get pissed off or, you know, do any of that crap. Like, cause it, especially since, since COVID, right? Like when COVID started, everybody got outdoors. A yeah. lot of new people came into the sport of fishing, exactly. kayaking, kayak fishing, things like that because that's all there was was to get outside right so i yeah. kind of approach it differently and i'm like hey man how you doing you know i'll start up a conversation and you know try to approach it that way i mean granted you're always going to get that old grumpy guy that's stuck in his ways and thinks yeah. he's right no matter what you say to him but you know approach it that way and yeah. uh just try to educate him like you said and yeah. it, it prevents those uh huge there's arguments bad interactions. On the yeah. yeah there's bad interactions and my favorite thing to do is when people do that to me is just lay the wood on as many fish as possible because they'll eventually they eventually oh, yeah. just get mad at me oh yeah yeah i've done that I've... multiple times where these people will just come up elbow to elbow i'm like all right whatever and then i just start slaying the fish and they're like oh i'm leaving i'm like yeah okay i've, I've done that before on the home lake here and it's like somebody will see me catch a fish and i'll see him drifting in in the distance and they'll see me land it and next thing you know they get a little closer and a little closer it's like one of those little, little scary it's like one of those little scary videos you watch where it's like all of a sudden they're just like in your face like, yeah. Like, yeah 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 like the strobe lights in the distance and like you see him get closer 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 yeah oh my goodness uh facebook user i don't know if this is mad or not but he says a lot of people are new now and if we can help them then maybe they'll educate someone and i i completely agree with that that's the best yeah, way to absolutely. go about it you it's know? a snowball effect you know sure sure i mean it, it, it's like finding a good bait right you tell one mm -hmm. buddy he tells two buddies those two buddies tell three of their buddies and then those three of their buddies you know are it, word spreads you know yeah um, exactly I think that's it. Like for some of us that have been in the uh, fishing realm for a while and uh, you know, we've learned a thing or two, like that's the best thing you could do. Don't be a jerk off about it. Just, just yeah. try to talk to somebody and, and help educate them. You know, if you're going to, you can be decent to someone, be respectful. Um, nine times out of 10, if you're like, Hey man, I would appreciate if you give me a little bit more space, they're probably going to move and just start that conversation off the right way. And I think, yeah. The world would be a better place because of it. And the banks, if not, too. if not, jack six fish in front of them. Yeah. If not, rip some lips in front of them and they'll get the message. You start, dude, taking there is return. not a better feeling, right? There's not oh, a better gosh. feeling when somebody moves in on you. Like uh, I, that happened to me last summer, dude. I was spot locked fishing these deep underwater trees and I'm just laying into them left and right. And like I said, that boat kept moving in, moving in. And then finally, like I jacked like three or four fish and they finally were just like, I don't get it and left, like yeah. took off. And I just sat there and laughed to myself for about a minute. Yeah. But you Man, know, that it, was like it was like a, like that at Dill Hollow when we were fishing that tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys ran into some boat guys, right? Oh man, I, I was in a spot where I was like, There's no boats gonna come back here. Sure enough, there was one boat that came back here, he seen me and like turned around and left. I was like, Awesome, that's pretty cool. Sure. There's this one boat that was like on my tail all day long. And like, I don't know if we want to talk about the tournament now or later, but yeah, yeah, it's a good segue, man. Go into yeah, it. Definitely. Like, um, like an hour left, like the second day, there's a boat, like he was fishing in my hole and I was just like, whatever. Like he fired up his engine. You can hear it in the video. He's like, whoa, just starts it up. I'm just like, oh God. 
<laughs> and I ended up catching like three fish in the next 30 minutes, like right behind them. It was so awesome. That's oh, great. Oh, gosh. That was hilarious. Well, that was uh well, let's talk about this, right? Because like you're new to kayaking, kayak fishing. You've always been a, a creek guy, wading, bank fishing, things like that. But this year you decided to get into the kayak. What what kind of was that deciding factor, man? Being able to just like I said earlier, reach those places that I couldn't really reach from the bank. Cause if you want to be legal, you got the navigable waterways on your side. And you can really get into those places that you can't you can't reach from the bank. Sure. Um, and just I wanted to get into it and I wanted to dabble on the tournament scene a little bit because I thought I would be able to do pretty good um, from all the experience I've gained from the bank. And it's translated over to the kayaking pretty easily. And it's it's a blast. Kayak fishing is cool. I'm not a pro at it by no means, but I just picked up that old town pdl 106 pedal yep. drive this past spring or just a few months ago actually at the uh at the columbus fishing expo mm-hmm. i think or since yeah the columbus fishing expo the big one and uh <laughs> got it from strictly sailing kayak it's a kayak um, company down in cincinnati they have tons of kayaks but i uh, picked it up from i think the guy's name is brian the brian he's the owner there's a bunch of Brian's everywhere. You got you, mine, my name's hey, Brian. You know? Brian's hey. in the fishing world, they're just badasses. They just, I mean, yeah, they're just hammers, just right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I picked it up and holy smokes, man. Going from like I had a little pelican, like nine and a half footer, just to like get in and see. Sure. And uh I got into it and I started I caught like one of my first ever outings in the little pelican. I caught a like, 20 and a half inch, like just tank of a large mouth nice and i was like man this is pretty cool so i was like <laughs> i'm gonna start saving up i sold a couple things and i was like i'm gonna step up to the big leagues and i got that pdl and i'm like this is way nice like this, i can stand up in it i couldn't stand up before i can stand up look around and that was key fishing at dale hollow is standing up and like looking around for isolated cover sure oh goodness it was it was on from there and this little it's like 10 and a half. 106 is 10 and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 10 and it's, a half footer. It's awesome, man. It's super stir- super sturdy, stable. Tracks nice. Brian Tacey is the owner. Yeah, Brian. He's a cool dude down there strictly sale in Cincinnati. We got a, a question in here real quick, man, not to stop you, but uh William is asking uh when's the next small jaw tournament? So the small jaw brawl is a tournament that some local guys started here in Ohio. Some of you guys know Ryan Dahl or Jason Myers. Yep. Um, they started a cool little tournament in Ohio, and it's a bunch of bank fishermen, kayak anglers. There's even a dude that participated that's got a freaking jet boat. Nice. And <laughs> he goes down the river doing like 90. I'll never do that. But <laughs> it's a small jaw. It's a small mouth tournament. It usually went for, a mount, uh, went for like a month or so, but I think they're going to do it in the fall. Okay. Right on. Right on. Well, that, that, uh, PDL one Oh six, man, like that's what, uh, I brought one of those down to Dell hollow and we put, uh, uh, Shane Lamont's wife in that. that yeah. Boat. I seen that. I seen that. And, uh, she kicked his ass. Just want to mention yeah. that, uh, yeah. because we are still continuing to give Shane a hard time. Mr. <laughs> uh, Mr. Big wig sponsored by motor guide and bonafide got his butt kicked by his wife yeah uh, who's never fished a kayak tournament so just want to bring that up but uh you know she she loved that thing man like i've never been in the 106 i've been in the 120 and i've been in the predator uh by old town but dude yeah great little boats man great, great boat. and i wanted boat. to get it so i can get into the, like the little creeks and rivers around my house and it's literally perfect it's perfect do you struggle at all with like uh because like their drive when it's down it's it's a fixed down so have mm-hmm. you like had any issues with that or are you when you're going to some of your spots are you having to pop that up and paddle some Yeah you can pop it up shell? real easily or I just ordered a insert Oh so okay Now if I go to a shallow creek I don't even take my pedal drive I'll just put the insert in That's there right. latch it down and now I just have a regular paddle kayak yeah, that's kind of cool. That's what I've always liked about them. They've they've kind of done that for a while with their PDLs, where you can just get a that cover that f- yeah. fills that hole in the hall, man, which is cool. 
yeah I, I just got it like a week ago i ordered it from canada it took forever to get here but uh, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah it did. <laughs> i was like guys i'm fa-. i was like man when's this thing getting here it's in like almost a month they're like it's coming i was like all right just Customs, finally got bro. it Customs. yeah that's but problem. it's cool it's easy it's easy to pull that uh drive out and it locks in the place like when you pull it up it just yep. locks there so you yep. can go over like your shallow runs and stuff like that um pretty easily no, nah, super cool, man. Super cool. What do you think has uh, been your uh, biggest learning curve getting into the kayak? Biggest learning curve. Learning how to position yourself in the water for your casting. Okay. Um, especially like in moving water, uh, like where you want to face because you got the current going against you, stuff like that. And then even on the big water, I was having problems with like, boat wake and trying to get adjusted to like other people on the water pushing me around sure because i try to go across dale hollow when he was down there and these dudes are doing like 100 miles an hour and these wakes are like three foot and i was surprised i was like all right this is the day i'm going to test it during a tournament let's go so i went across (laughs) i went across and these like three three foot wakes man were hitting me and i was like oh my goodness this is actually stable so i was like i'll keep going so i just kept going and yeah i just just all the dynamics that are like that hit you when you're in a kayak as opposed to being on land. Sure. 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 I can see that, man. I mean, it, it it's, especially when it's uh, something you're not used to, you know, it's, it's something that uh, you got to get accustomed to and kind of figure out where you want all your stuff and things like that. And not yeah, only that, that, but like how far your boat can go, you know? Yeah. And uh, another cool thing is just learning all the accessories. Yeah. When we were down there, the first day, I was having a lot of difficulties with my net. Like, pulling okay. my net out of the back, it would, like, hook onto my rods. And the guy who owns Eastport Marina, yeah. he took me to his shop Saturday night. And he's like, I got something cool. And I attached a little, little, just a little gadget on the front of my kayak that attaches to my pedal drive. Roto, roto grip? Roto, a roto grip. Yep. And... Yep. So now my, my net is literally right in front of me. And that second day, I don't think I missed a fish in the net. Like I was nice. able to just reach it. I wasn't sitting there fumbling with my net behind me and just learning all those little gadgets that can assist you in landing fish has been pretty cool. I've added all kinds of cool little stuff to my kayak. What do you think your favorite accessory is? It would have to be the grow to grip. <laughs> just because i can land it's it's just something that's out of the way because the front of my kayak there's nothing up there really sure, sure 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 um so now i have a bunch more space in the back i can put another rod or something um i don't know that'd be interesting that's an interesting tech that's an interesting question the rotor grip's cool man just something little like that and having a having a fish finder i got a little garmin 73 sv aq map nice that's pretty cool um, learning that technology, learning those technologies is just, there's so much to it. Well, when you're a Creek guy, I mean, you know, electronics ain't, or isn't usually yeah, a go-to are, these are thing. electronics you know? right here my eyeballs. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Garmin right here when I go into the Creek. So All right, it's like four foot. Right. Now that, uh, <laughs> now that you have the kayak and stuff, are you going to start venturing out and fishing some more lakes and stuff like that? Or are you just sticking so to the rivers? I, I went, I um, went zero to 60. So I signed up for a Hobie BOS tournament. Oh shit, son. <laughs> it's a river. I signed up for the Susquehanna um, okay. tournament. I, I know lot. one of our guys right now, Sean Lowry's on the Susky and he just sent a photo in the group chat here. And it oh, looks like good. a good, good 18 incher. Let me see if I could get this to pop up on the screen. Dude, I'll, I've been uh, watching Susky videos like on repeat. <laughs> Just the Susquehanna that man is a is a small mouth haven, you know. I cannot um, wait. I'm so stoked to go. And here we go. Here we go. I got it. I got. It. Boom. John Lavery doing work, son. Out on the Susky oh, right yeah. now. That's a oh, good one. Oh, what a lucky dog, dude. I love so, those markings. Oh, yeah, 
beautiful, beautiful fish. But the Susky man is just so well known, especially among kayak anglers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, just because it's, it's a, does have deep parts. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of shallow rock and, and just the, the size of the smallmouth in there are just so yeah. healthy. Everyone's so telling healthy. me it's like a great Miami river on steroids. So I'm ready to go. Nice. Nice. So in Ohio, what's, what's your favorite, uh, body of water to fish? Ah, oh, man, everything brings something to the table. Um, the Great Miami River is probably one of my favorite. If I want to go catch a big smallmouth, I'm going to the Great Miami River. Hands down, it's probably one of the best inland rivers we have to offer. But going to the Ohio River and targeting hybrid striped bass, I don't know if you like hybrid striped bass. Oh, who doesn't? Uh, I was about to say, like, it's the, it'd, be a, it'd be a tough choice between a hybrid, a big hybrid and a big smallie, like those two fish right there. Anywhere I can tangle with those two, I'm, I'd love to go. I like it. I like it, dude. What uh what's uh what's kind of your go to uh bait for fishing uh in Ohio for smallies? Um I got a couple. Actually I have some right here with me. I'm actually gonna show you the ones that I use at Dale Hollow, but it's the same concept here. Um so I've been using these little soft plastic leeches. Oh, okay. Just on a little football head. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. This has been absolutely phenomenal for me this this entire early spring. Just this little leech, a little trick worm. That's what I called them all on Dale Hollow, too. This exact, exact same thing. Who makes that? This is a, a Nico Bates. Okay. This is their magma leech, so it's got that nice stretchy material, so it lasts a long time. I think I used one leech the entire tournament while I was down there. <laughs> nice. But then I'm also a fan of little swim baits. In the rivers and creeks, this little Kitech 3.3 fat impact, and this is the, this is the exact one I saved. This is the one from Dale Hollow. I cut it off my line because I was super stoked to <laughs> place up in the top five with this. But it, it's a little Kitech football head. I like football heads recently. Just dragging little football like heads, it. little swim bait like that. But I'm also a huge, huge fan of top water. If I can find a top water bite, I love walking baits. Just any kind of walking bait, any kind of walking bait going across the surface, just getting crushed. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Jerk baits, too. Jerk baits are awesome. I love a bunch of stuff. I'll be honest. I have a, I'm pretty comfortable with a lot of baits. But little swim baits, little soft plastic trick worms like this, and obviously the little Helgramite I use a lot on my channel um, are just phenomenal baits. And I can go around and catch pretty much anything on those. I just dropped the the link to the Nico Bates in the uh, into the chat there for you guys okay. that, that are, are interested in checking those out. Plus, uh, if you guys are listening on the podcast later uh, after the live, uh, all this stuff will be in the show notes as well for you guys to check out. Um, I did I forgot to mention it, I think, but I did post uh, the link to uh, Brian's uh, YouTube channel as well if you guys want to check that out. Yeah, and if you use code CRAWLER10, you can get 10% off anything on the Nico, uh, that website right there. Nice. I'll put that in here. CRAWLER10. We got to make you look good, bro. <laughs> um, but, no, that's super cool, man. Like, I... For the longest time, like I, I used to be a power fisherman and then like I got into the finesse game and I like I have not turned back, dude. And like one of the things I wanted to learn when I got into finesse fishing was a shaky head, and it's pretty much the same as that football head, bro. Yeah. And it's like I I have a hard time putting it down and fishing something else just because I catch fish, you know. The the thing is with finesse techniques, it's like a year round thing, you know, like any anywhere you go a finesse technique is going to catch fish you, you got to be obviously cognizant of like the structure and stuff you're fishing around but i was able to get away with these little techniques at Dale hollow and i use them a bunch in the rivers and creeks here in ohio and you can stick a lot of good fish with some just with some finesse techniques takes a lot of patience though yeah, for sure. That's for that's sure. one thing you gotta learn real quick as a as a power fisherman. You know, you're buzzing through stuff. 
when you tie on a little like a little trick worm or something you really got to start dissecting cover and stuff down really slow and i was freaking out during that tournament kind of i had like an hour left and i and i needed to get one more fish for my limit on sunday and i was like man we got an hour left and like i literally fished like one section of like 30 to 40 yards in that one hour with that finesse worm and i, I was able to catch my limit and upgrade two fish nice so yeah just learning that patience and learning and just understanding that you're going to catch fish you just got to be slow and i know that goes against everything tournament english probably are are brought up to learn but not necessarily man like i always tell everybody man like all you need is five good bites you don't have to catch 30 fish in a tournament you just need five yeah you know and you never know when that's going to be like there's so many times where i've heard in tournament scenarios just as you're talking about man i needed one more fish and bam got it or needed an upgrade and in the last minute and a half of the tournament guys are yeah. getting it you know yeah literally it was like five minutes before the tournament up, was up and i upgraded like a quarter or a half inch and uh it was just crazy it was a crazy time I, I loved it so much enjoyed it so much you guys put an awesome awesome tournament on down to hollow i can't wait to go back we'll be there next year bro i know i'm, I'm already itching to go again <laughs> i'll meet you down there uh i'm and always me and my buddy stayed there, at east port marina uh was it last last summer we went in the summer it was super tough fishing but we stayed in that walleye right there east port marina oh owns yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah walleye point i believe yep. it's called yep yeah we stayed there those cabins were phenomenal yep super affordable too man a trip down to del hollow costs nothing if you go with a couple dudes right 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 yeah and they got some they got some pretty badass cabins i mean the those ones you're talking about those are kind of on the smaller side and then they got even bigger ones man which is nice you know yeah um i know this year we stayed in uh the ones up by the barn dude and they were just beautiful and it was perfect for us you know it was but, awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad I got to go. A lot of things happened before, like a week before the tournament. And I was just super stoked that I was able to join you guys. Well, and you came out in the top five, bro. Like you, you cashed a check it. and all that <laughs> stuff. You, you got a little emotional on me as I handed you your oh, check, man, which was, yeah. which was rightfully knew... so, dude. Like, let's, yeah. let's talk about that, dude. Because I mean, did when you got back to check-in, did you have any idea where you were sitting? So, I'm going to explain my emotions first. Because there was a group of guys that was telling me that I had no business even going down there. And okay. that struck a chord with me because I was like, you know what? I'm going to go down there and prove these dudes wrong. Okay. And I went down there and did it. And I was like super pumped. And like my wife and my daughters were watching at home. I told them to get on and be like, hey, watch watch the live that they're going to do, you know, for the Dale Hollow. I think I did pretty good. And it was just the emotions took over. And I was like, man, this is, this is special. And when I got off day two, when it was lines out at two 30, I was like, I was up in the top 10. I was like, man, I'm pretty sure I bagged the top 10. And I was already like super stoked about that. And I was like, Oh no. Then I got there and you called the names up for the top over like six through 10. And my name wasn't up there. I was like, no way. And I was just started like I was sitting in the chair. I was I was down there with Matt Davis. We we got a little place down there. Sure. And uh, I was like, no way, dude. My heart just started racing. I was like, this is super. This is super awesome. And I think you guys got me addicted to like the kayak tournament stuff now. So I thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> No, that's super cool, man. Especially like you said, you know, you got uh, you got some naysayers, some doubters, and then you go out there and you uh, <laughs> give it your all and you prove them wrong, dude. That's great. exactly that's it. Was, great. It was cool. I came back. I came back with that check because there was some coworkers I had. I came sure. back with that check. I walked in the office the next day. I was like walking through the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think the guy. So I told him when we went down there, I was like, I think there's like forty five, almost fifty people in. Sure. And I don't sure. think one of them said I would crack like the top 30. And I was like, you know what? All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Get down there. <laughs> well, and especially too, because we had some cold fronts roll in, things like that, dude. Like the conditions weren't that great, dude. It was no. it was it was tough fishing that week for everybody. Like 
some guys got on them earlier in the week, but then like as the weekend kicked in and that cold front moved in, it, it, it really affected those fish, dude. And, and not only that, like we talked about earlier, dude, there was, I think 250 MLF so boats that had been beaten up that lake. Oh, for and guess what? I was, oh, I was right on top of them. I got a place literally right on the boat ramp. I don't, I don't even know how it was open. Cause I got a place on the boat ramp and I literally just parked my kayak right off the side of the, my, <laughs> the place I was living. It was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I was fishing literally behind all, every one of them. It was crazy. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Did you stick any fish in front of the pros? That's what the guys you really want to get at. Did I? I don't know. I just only the saw guy a couple on day boats. two, right? Yeah. The guy on day two. Yeah. Yeah, the guy on day two is the one I stuck three fish in front of. <laughs> and he didn't catch one. Good for it was you. Pretty, that was pretty cool. Good for you. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's man, awesome. The, the key was that that day, that tournament was, I found water that was 60 degrees. Oh, wow. And everywhere else was like 53, 54. Sure. And I found a cove that was, I don't know why, it was just warm. I had my Garmin. I didn't even take my Garmin during the tournament because once I found the 60 degree water, I was like, well, this is where I'm going to fish the whole time. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. No, that's huge, especially in that time of year, those conditions, man. You find that warmer water, those fish are going to be a little more hungry compared to yeah. uh, the colder water, you know? Yeah, I ended up catching like five or six fish just in that little cove the whole weekend. Just in that that's little awesome. cove, I caught five or six fish. It was crazy. Caught one of my heaviest fish in practice. So I got there like Friday. I was like, I had four hours to practice. I was like, I'm going to just run out here, just use my Garmin and just try to find something. And I found some fish off some points. Then I found that warm creek. And I was like, all right, that's cool. I just took my Garmin off and put it in the car. <laughs> nice. I didn't nice. want to mess with it, man. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. But super cool man well so are you uh you, you signed up for the hobie susky event what you planning on yes. fishing any other kayak tournaments this year so uh ckf cincinnati kayak fishing brian yep. the guy at strictly sale he um they run a pretty cool series i'm gonna try to go to one or two it's been super busy um i just got a new job so i'm working a lot um but i definitely plan on hitting a couple of those before i go to the susky and i think that one's in july um, couple, couple, just couple local derbies and stuff like that, and very cool. A lot of fun fishing, man. I love, I, I just love grabbing my one rod, one reel, and hitting the creek somewhere, doing some wet wading, especially in the in the warmer months. Getting sure. in that cold creek feels great. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. Any uh, big plans coming up for uh, the YouTube channel? Yeah, I'm coming up on five thousand subscribers. Um, that's a pretty cool milestone for me. Heck yeah, I'm excited. Man. I think I might do like a little giveaway or something. I do giveaways every now and then on my channel. Just to, just to show some love to people that watch my content and engage with me. So I'll probably do a little giveaway for $5,000. Um, got a really big name sponsor coming up here soon. I'll probably release that in the next few weeks once we get everything settled. But um, yeah, I've been on Team Waterland, Team Nico, Team Vance Outdoors here in Ohio, and we've been kicking butt down here. Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. I like it, man. Any uh, final thoughts or anything like that before we sign off here, brother? No, I appreciate everyone coming in, talking, giving us some questions. Appreciate you, Brian, and the Paddle and Finn folks for bringing yeah, me man. on and, and holding an excellent tournament down there. That was that was just – now, I like – before we went down there, I was listening to all y'all reminisce about past experience down at Dale Hollow, and it just really didn't do it justice. You sure. really got to go there and experience it in person. And just that landscape down there is just so awesome. And there's world-class smallmouth fishery, despite me not even catching a smallmouth the entire tournament. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a world-class smallmouth fishery, and it was pretty cool. We're hoping with the dates next year that the the smallmouth fishing's a little bit better. I think all the fishing will be better next year yeah. with those dates. You said dates. you're doing later April, later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I could tell you the dates. I should know these off the top of my head. I want to say it's twenty third, twenty fourth, but I could be wrong. 
Yeah, is, that's going to be a lot better. Many. 22nd, 23rd. Okay, yeah. So Yeah, a few weeks yeah. after when we got there, I think that'll be, the bio will really be on fire. The smallies will probably be moving up for the pre-spawn. Um, yeah. getting putting their feed bags on. We're probably gonna see some big fish next year. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a long way away, but it comes quick. Uh Chris Yonks in the chat. He said uh CKF Cowan Lake is coming up, dude. That's a good one. Black That's blue a jig. Good one. Black yeah, blue jig. I'm telling you. I took my little pelican on C- on that CKF Cowan one. Okay. And uh I took it on there and caught like some twelve inches. So I'm ready to redeem myself. Oh, there's bigger fish. Yeah, there is some bigger fish in there. So I just got a bait caster too. So a couple bait casting combo setups. So nice. now I'm ready for flipping and pitching. I like it. I like it. Black blue jig, dude. My favorite story from fishing Cowan Lake. It was uh me, my normal co host, Jay Randall, who uh is probably moving furniture right now. His furniture truck finally showed up in Tennessee. And uh uh one of our other hosts uh josh eldridge and uh it was a hot day dude it was like fourth of july weekend and josh had struggled to catch a fish all day and i I turned and looked at jay i was like watch this and i cast my jig and it lands like inches from josh's kayak water splashes up hits him on the elbow and he's like (laughs) what is that and i'm like watch this dude two little hops and i stuck a fish right underneath his kayak and i was like bro i told you dude he's like i'm done i'm done i'm going in i'm done oh dude he was so pissed so pissed couldn't catch a fish all day and i caught one from underneath his kayak dude he was not happy with oh me. goodness but, that's uh, awesome no that's a it's a great lake dude i i really enjoyed my time fishing there i i fished the gmr when i was out there too with uh brad hicks and all those guys man and uh dude just uh just a fun time man ohio's got some quality water i mean obviously you guys got lake erie and i've while i fished that and stuff like that but dude uh i ohio's underrated dude it's I mean, super underrated we have a lot of opportunities that people don't realize that we have here for and it's sure. a shame because that brings that brings a lot of uh economy here a lot of tourism and stuff like that and can help a lot of the local businesses for sure i know a lot of ohio guys say the fishing sucks in ohio but i'm like hey bro they're they're joking dude they're joking come to illinois come to illinois (laughs) (laughs) no there's uh good fishing everywhere you go you just gotta find the right spots you know yep so start with the creeks and work your way out from there and you'll be all right heck yeah heck yeah man completely agree completely agree I'm going to drop for you guys uh, Brian's YouTube channel down here in the chat again. Uh, go follow him. Subscribe to his channel. Um, what's uh, what's your socials, man, if anybody wants to follow you on the social medias? So I got my YouTube channel, The Creek Crawler, and I just started Instagram a few years ago, and it's the same, the underscore creek underscore crawler, The Creek Crawler yeah. on Instagram as well. And I just dropped that uh, YouTube link in the chat. If you guys are listening on the podcast platforms, it'll be in the show notes uh, for you guys to go click and follow. And uh, good stuff, dude. I appreciate you jumping on tonight, just sitting down, chatting uh, your journey, your fishing, and all that good stuff, man. You're doing some cool things, dude. And I look forward to seeing what you're doing in the future, brother. Absolutely, Brian. Thanks for having me and have a good night, man. Heck yeah, you too. Everybody uh, listening now uh, on the live, uh, Dustin Nichols is coming up at 7.15. They're going live. They're recapping one of the Redfish tournaments from this past weekend. Uh, Should be some good stuff. Uh, You know, I still got to get down there by Dustin and do some saltwater fishing. Still a bucket list thing. I've never fished saltwater, bro. Believe me. Redfish? Oh, goodness. Dude, yeah, they, uh, they... he said it was pretty intense, and I know uh, Dustin did pretty good, as he usually does, but uh, they're going live here in the next uh, 20 minutes or so on the Paddle and Finn uh, Facebook and YouTube, so tune in, watch those guys. Uh, go give Brian a follow on the Creek Crawler channel. Uh, look forward to talking to you again, my friend, and uh, for all you boys and girls out there, as always, as always, tight lines, smooth paddle.
Sidelines. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode here on Paddle and Finn. Be sure to drop a five star rating, a thumbs up, or smash that subscribe button on any platform you're listening in on. Be sure to check us out on Waypoint TV, waypointtv.com. Make sure you sign up for the Fantasy Kayak Fishing League at paddleandfin.com forward slash fantasy. You could support this show through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash paddleandfin. Don't forget to check out the website paddleandfin.com. Catch us on YouTube. If you got question, comment, or want to see a future guest on the show, be sure to email us at paddleandfin at gmail.com. Shout out to our show supporters, Yak Gadget. You can check out all the fine kayak accessories at yakgadget.com. Pelican Professional. For all your cases, coolers, and lighting needs, go to pelican.com. Rocktown Adventures. Your Midwest premier paddle sports destination. Go to rocktownadventures.com. Eastport Marina. The beautiful destination on Dale Hollow Lake. If you're looking for lodging, kayaks, kayak accessories, or anything fishing related on the beautiful Dale Hollow Lake, go to eastport.info. And Jig Masters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and fill your tackle boxes today.